What are the top 10 must-have tarantulas for your collection? Well, today you're gonna find out. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we're counting down the top 10 must-have species in the tarantula hobby. So if you don't have these tarantulas, you should probably get on that. Now these aren't all advanced species, but they're not all beginner friendly either. I have a lot of videos on most of these species that go in depth. So if you want more information, I'll leave those linked down below in the description. So let's just jump right into this list. Now number 10 is an awesome species, and that is a Xenethesis amonis. Known commonly as the Colombian Lesser Black Tarantula, this New World species is almost in a class of its own. I mean, it's just one bad tarantula. With its deep black coloration and the goldish pinkish sete on the abdomen and bright pink starburst pattern on the carapace, not only that, but they have some unique behaviors. When threatened or disturbed, they will typically stick their abdomen straight up in the air. They're very fast, have an insane feeding response, and they grow to be pretty large as well. So if you're looking for a tarantula that spends a lot of time out in the open, grows to an impressive size, has striking colors, and an intense feeding response, then you've got to get a Xenethesis amonis. Now number nine is another New World terrestrial tarantula that just always impresses me, and that is the Formictopus auratus. Also known commonly as the Cuban bronze tarantula, this New World species is in a class of its own. Not only do they grow rather large, they spend a lot of time out in the open. They have a very cool kind of purplish color to their legs and abdomen, but the carapace is what really sets them apart. This metallic, reflective, copper to bronze color carapace is simply gorgeous. But it's not just the looks that makes this tarantula a must-have species. They also have a very intense feeding response. They're a lot of fun to watch crawling around their enclosure. And I don't know what it is that just gives a tarantula that wow factor for me, but from the moment I added this species to my collection, I have just been steadily impressed. So yeah, for me, that is a must-have species. Now number eight is a tarantula I don't think many people will disagree with, and that is the Gramistola pulchra. Also known as the Brazilian black tarantula, this species is nothing short of beautiful. They may not have bright, vivid colors like some tarantulas, but their velvety, deep black color is very impressive. They're also very docile and are commonly referred to as the black labs of the tarantula hobby. And that's not just because of their color, it's because they're essentially a docile species. I don't think mine has ever kicked tears at me. I've never seen it give me a threat pose. But despite their laid back demeanor, they have a very intense feeding response. They will pounce on a cricket or a roach like few other species in my collection will. So for an overall beautiful tarantula that's usually on display and that isn't gonna give you a hard time at all, you gotta go with the Brazilian black tarantula. Now number seven isn't gonna so much be a species of tarantula, but a genus. Because personally, I think you should have every single species available in this genus. But if you're only gonna add one, I really don't know which one to suggest because they're all really cool. So number seven is the Cyracosma species. Now whether we're talking about the Litsi or the Elegans or any of the other species, this dwarf tarantula is simply amazing. They all have beautiful colors, awesome patterns, they do a lot of webbing, and they're just overall a cool tarantula. Now they don't grow very large, I don't think any of them exceed more than like three or three and a half inches diagonal leg span. But what they lack in size, they make up in colors, patterns, and personality. They can be a little skittish, but they're not very defensive. All of mine will much rather run and hide before kicking hairs or throwing up any kind of threat posts. They're very easy to take care of, very fun to watch, and a beautiful addition to anybody's collection. So don't skip over this entire genus just because they're all dwarfs, because you're really gonna be missing out on some beautiful tarantulas. Now, no must-have list would be complete without number six, and that is the Theraphosa Sturmy. Referred to usually as the Burgundy Goliath Bird Eater, 
This is one of the largest species of tarantulas in the entire world. Yes, they may just be a boring brown tarantula, but what makes them so amazing isn't just their color. The sheer size and weight of this tarantula is extremely impressive, but they're also very fascinating to watch walking around, and when it comes time to feed, the display of power and speed will just blow your mind. Their care and husbandry is a little more on the advanced side, but that shouldn't scare you away. This is one of the most impressive tarantulas on this planet, so when you feel ready, you should really consider picking up one of these Goliath bird eaters. Now this next species is an old world fossorial tarantula that you're probably gonna ask yourself, why is this a must have? And I'm gonna tell you, because since I've gotten this tarantula, I have become obsessed with watching it. It's a little skittish and reclusive, but I enjoy sneaking up on the enclosure and am just mesmerized watching it for, I don't know, it seems like hours, but it's probably nowhere near that long. So the number five must have tarantula is the Chilibrachi species electric blue. They've just recently started breeding this tarantula here in the US, so it may still be a little rare and a little expensive, but it is probably my favorite fossorial tarantula. And no collection of tarantulas is complete without some fossorial species. And if you're only gonna keep one fossorial, I highly suggest this one. All black with a little bit of gray, but what really sets them apart and makes them an awesome tarantula is the iridescent, otherworldly blue coloration on their legs. Usually the most you ever see of a fossorial tarantula is the front few legs peeking out from their burrow. And that's why this tarantula is a must-have fissorial, because those few legs that are sticking out are almost glowing with that blue color. It's beautiful, and it, it blows my mind every time I see it. Now, number four is another old-world tarantula, but this one is arboreal instead of fissorial, which means it's a tree-dwelling tarantula, and that is the Postlotheria metallica. Of all the Postlotheria species, and probably most of the arboreal species of tarantula, the Goody Sapphire Ornamental is among the most popular. But the reason I think it's a must-have tarantula isn't just because of its bright blue coloration with black and white spots, but it's because of all the Postlotheria species that I keep, the Metallica is among the most docile. Now, that doesn't mean you can handle it or that it's a docile tarantula, but my Goody Sapphires have yet to show me a threat pose and almost always would rather run and hide, then show any defensive behavior. Some say they have the most potent venom of any Postlotheria species, which may be true, I, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. But in my experience, they're fairly calm, easy to take care of, a little reclusive, but when they are out and on display, it is like no other tarantula in this world, which is why I think they are a must-have species for you once you're comfortable keeping old world tarantulas. Now, no list of must-have species would be complete without number three, and that is the Chromatopelma cyanopubescence. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, then it is no secret that the green bottle blue is my all-time favorite tarantula. In fact, if I could only keep one species of tarantula, this is the one I would keep. They're one of the only species of tarantula that encompass all of my favorite aspects of spiders. They're out on display a lot. They've got bright colorations with their gorgeous blues and greens and reds. They're prolific webbers and will cover any enclosure in intricate, beautiful spider webs. They have an awesome feeding response. And they're a new world species, so they don't have medically significant venom. I've already rated them the number one best display tarantula, so it should be no surprise that they are a must-have species as well. So if you don't have one in your collection, I highly suggest starting off with a spider lake because it is a lot of fun to watch them grow and see their colors and patterns change with every molt. And they're one of the few species species of tarantula that is as beautiful as a spiderling and a juvenile as they are when they're an adult. So a must-have species is definitely the GBB. Now number two, I might get some pushback on. Not everyone is a fan of this tarantula. In fact, some people are extremely terrified of it. But in my experience, there's, there's not much to be afraid of. Yes, it is an old world tarantula and is known to be very defensive, but if you keep them set up in the right type of enclosure, you're gonna have no problems at all. So number two is a Pteranoculus moranus.
Also known in the hobby as the orange baboon tarantula or the OBT, this is definitely a must-have species in my opinion. With its bright, solid orange color, with black spots and stripes on the abdomen, and a starburst pattern on the carapace, this is a beautiful tarantula, unlike really anything else in the hobby. But it's not just the appearance that I'm in love with. The OBT enclosure is one of my favorite enclosures to look at. I set mine up semi-arborally, so they have plenty of substrate to burrow down, but I also give them hides and vertical branches that they can web up, and that makes them very creepy and cool looking web tunnels. And the bigger they get, the more elaborate the webbing is. They have a very powerful feeding response. Sometimes they're so fast, I don't even realize they've grabbed the cricket until it's gone. So they're definitely not a good beginner species, but once you're ready to start keeping old worlds and you feel comfortable and confident with rehousing, the OBT should be on the top of your list. I mean, it's a ginger tarantula. How could I not love it? Now, before we get to the number one must-have species, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps this channel out a lot and it convinces the YouTube algorithm to suggest this video to more people. So if you enjoy this type of content and you want other people to see it as well and help this channel to grow, hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And if you're really feeling generous, share this video with your friends. So the number one must-have tarantula species, in my opinion at least, is a tarantula that is as fuzzy looking as it is colorful. So the number one spot goes to the Carabina Versicolor or the Martinique or Antilles Pink Toe Tarantula. There are fewer species of tarantula as beautiful as this one. It's a new world arboreal tarantula native to the Caribbean that is simply just gorgeous. The setae of this species really gives them a fluffy, soft look, and their bright greens and reds really catch your eye. But it's not just that. They're an arboreal tarantula that makes their homes high in the enclosure or in trees and bushes in nature, and they make some very cool webs to live in. So obviously they're a great display tarantula. Mine are usually almost always out where you can view them. But similar to the Chromatopelma sinopubescens, the Carabina versicolor is as amazing and beautiful as a sling as they are when they become full-grown adults. They also do some pretty cool things, like, like they can jump, whether it's to attack prey or to get away from you. And they have a very unique defense mechanism where when they feel threatened, they'll actually shoot their poop in the direction of whatever it is that's causing them stress. But for the most part, they're a very docile species. And once you get their husbandry down, very easy to take care of. Now, if you're interested in keeping any of these species yourself and would like some more details on their care and their husbandry, a lot of these tarantulas I've actually made species specific videos on that again are gonna be linked down below in the description. Well, I appreciate you watching. I wanna say thanks to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. I couldn't do this without you all. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of my top 10 lists, just click this playlist right here. And if you wanna see my latest video, just click right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>